and I tell you what, the Black Ferns are alive and kicking as well after taking out France this morning in WXV1, their final test of 2024. It has been... Well, it's been a tough run for them so far this year. A 50-50 win record. They've played eight test matches and they have only won half of them. A couple of games against Australia, one this morning against France and then USA. So how do you rate their season a year out from the World Cup? Do results matter between World Cups? Totally. I think it's a really disappointing season. I think they'd be gutted. They're world champions and you'd expect world champions to come off the back of being world champions and have better results. Are they rebuilding? Possibly, but I think they'd have to be disappointed. Yeah, 100%. Oh, I think, I mean, you rewind and Dino before the last uh, World Cup, you know, when they went on a, on a tour sort of similar, really, and they, um, uh, well, they were given a hiding, you know, um, then they've come back and they ended up winning their Rugby World Cup. I, I think they are rebuilding. I think there's still sort of key positions that they're trying to find sort of personnel in, you know, obviously the, your playmakers, um, but there's also, you know, a bit of the spine sort of starting to sort of um, form. I think. Having been on tour now, you know, they would have faced that. Um, it's tough when you're not not, not sort of winning, but um, evidently because they won that last game, I think they'll, that'll, um, I suppose, when they sort of digest everything else, they're putting them in better stead. Why do results matter in between World Cups? Because we saw that in 2021, it did not matter when they won the Rugby World Cup eight months later. So aside uh, from legacy... Yeah, I, I don't agree with that, though, Kirsty. And I don't agree with that because... Um, there was an absolute fallout. There was a like, we're never going to win the World Cup, called in Wayne Smith, um, transformed the team. So that was, that was crisis. So are they not in the same mode right now? I don't think so. I think, I think Mills is right. I think they're possibly in rebuild mode. But I think, you know, lose, uh, lose to England, we sort of get that. Like, us losing to South Africa as the All Blacks, OK, they're world champions, not happy, but OK. But I think... Um, you know, losing the first time or whatever it was to Canada was probably not what you wanted on the strip. They don't have the benefit of time. That's the challenge for them. They didn't have it last time and it was a miraculous turnaround with some really talented players. This is a different group. This is a different group in key positions you talked about. I actually think they're in the exact same position that the All Blacks are in right now, where they've shown a lot of potential, they've got a lot of ability, they can play well for periods of the game, but then they fall off at key moments and they are suffering the fact they're not finishing games as well as they need to as well. They've got a new coaching staff who I think haven't experienced the pressure they're under now. And so they've got without time and without test matches to prepare for a Rugby World Cup, which is going to be really challenging. They've got some personnel to come back though, Kirsty, right? Some well, key players. understandable sevens. that the Sevens players some players will make themselves available for the Rugby World Cup. It happens every cycle. It just is a matter of who. Who are the players and in what positions? Well, you know, if I look at it, it's, it's what's going to happen around their playmakers, and that's critical uh, for me. And, and where actually their skipper, Ruahei, the man plays, is probably going to determine what else you need around her. They'll get some help in the midfield, there's no doubt about that. I, I still look at, like I say, it, it, it's a, a fact, I see all the potential, I see all the right signs, I see all the possibilities, there's a balance, there is plenty of experience still there. But it's whether or not this team and those players and this coaching staff can connect quick enough and get better quickly, because that's what... What, what do they have, excuse my ignorance, but what do they have pre-World Cup? Well, they have Super Rugby Opiki, uh, and then they will have Pac-4, which is the competition between the Southern Hemisphere teams. The Australian... The, when, we, when we talk about the Australians, they're not quite good enough uh, competition-wise at the moment. Canada are fantastic, USA, middle of the road. We need tougher test matches against the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, absolutely. And we need to be able to improve. We need an opportunity to improve. And like you say, we haven't going to get those back-to-back -back test matches. But let's think about what it's going to take a, a Rugby World Cup to yeah. win. It's going to be maybe two, three games. Like, and I think that's the challenge, is that getting those games now, the pressure you've got that's not going to happen. You're just going to have to feel your way to a Rugby World Cup and then all of a sudden, bang, you've got two games you have to win, a semi-final and a final against teams who are proving right now they are slightly better than us. So your confidence level 10 months out from the Rugby World Cup, is it where it needs to it's be 50 right 50. now? It's 50-50. It's 50-50. Yeah, what's happened here? <laughs> yeah, my mic's still on. Try to shut me up, but I think JK was supposed to have my mic. So. <laughs> well, I feel like we're at the karaoke bar in Rapongi. He's got that switch from Goldie <laughs> where he just wants to switch it off.
Well, another team was named this week, not just the All Blacks squad to travel on the end of your tour, but the All Blacks 15. So this is basically uh, who will next be in line for an All Blacks jersey. Jeff, are there any names that surprised you from this 29 list? Uh, it was nice to see some names uh, through the course of not just Super Rugby, but um, NPC play really well. Kenny Naholo is one for me. All of a sudden for Taranaki, he showed that more consistent performances, back-to-back -back performances of the things he does well and made less mistakes because he was a little bit um, mistake prone. But for me, he's, an, uh, he's one. Naitoa Akoi, mm. uh, in, in transforming himself from a uh, blindside flanker into a lock, I think, to me, is a guy who's, whose stock has well and truly gone up. So those two names that I've pulled out, but everyone here, I think, I think was selections that you could explain because they've played well. South Africa continue to produce big men. And it's not something that we've actually produced a lot. A lot of our young guys are now going to basketball. I mean, back in the day, Stephen Adams would have played rugby. I look at it in this one. I look at this team and yeah. also the All Blacks. If we were here you know, 12 months ago thinking about the All Blacks, the one area that we probably would have had all concern with was probably the locking stocks. I think we're starting to really grow some, some depth in that, Goldie. And size is probably the, the big thing for us. And we lost Retallick, the physicality um, you know, point of view. You know, you're looking at Arkoy, he's, he's starting to come through. Walker, you know, Leo Wede, and now you know, Fabian Holland to learn off those guys while he's on tour. I think it's, it's, a, great, it's a great asset. And I look at this, and there's a lot of guys that need to keep making those step forwards. Now, how many of this group, though, mm. are going to get a true opportunity in two games? and the true value of this tour. Is this, I'll ask the question, do you think this is the, when you say the next cab off the rank, reality is, is this now, we've got Super Rugby, but this is a valuable level about finding out what some of these guys are. are and, and, and Munster and Georgia? Well, not just Munster and Georgia, because some of these players are going to get an opportunity to join the All Blacks for their trip to Japan and then later on in their tour against Italy as well. So some of these guys, whether it's the already capped internationals in here, uh, or maybe some of the newbies are going to get an opportunity. Well, that's massive, right, Mills? If you start thinking about if they're able, to, if they're coming off the bench in a test match, that really tells you where the All Blacks selectors are. The other ones that have picked this team. I, I, I don't I'll agree be surprised. With I don't think they should. I, I don't think agree. The, with the 36 should play in the test matches. Yeah. But if they're feeling for whatever reason, but I'm. I'm, I'm They've already bit, confirmed they're sending yeah, a party in advance to London. I don't agree with it for one, re one reason, Kirst. I think that this team have two, two games. They need to go away. They need to get their combinations together. Yeah. Clayton, who probably didn't even pick the side, needs to have this side so that when he can come back, he can say to the coaches, you know, this guy worked well, this guy was coachable, this guy. Yeah. But you taking them out and bringing them back in, I, I think I would rather take four but, or five extra All Blacks. But and eight of those then, guys, though, are just going as training partners. Some of them may play, some of them may go on, but initially they're going as training partners. And that's a week before their game uh, against Munster. So I, I'm not adverse to them being in the environment, but I'm, the, I'm interested in your thoughts on that, Mills, about... You know, do we, we picked 36 All Blacks, an All Black squad. Surely yeah. they're the guys that should have the responsibility for those five test matches. Yeah, 100%. And, and, I, and I think it, it, it will be then. It's just preparing them in that sort of first, you know, getting those guys there to have, have some, some numbers. Guys possibly might come in if there's an injury sort of cover. But 36 All Blacks, that's, that's your team. And I agree with you, JK. I think when you're going over there as an All Blacks 15, you, you want to be able to go over there and, and use those sort of guys. And I, and I think the, the All Blacks are going to have an influence, right? They've already said to, you know, Tate McMillan, these are the guys we want to play in this sort of position. Is it, is it a Holland? Is it, a, is it a, you know, a Walker Lea Weddy? You, you, you don't want to go to Munster and play and lose. You don't want to do that, right? If you're in the 15, I'm looking at this tour, Georgia are good. Georgia, most of the Georgians are playing... Um, especially the forwards they play in France. They're a really good team. But you don't want to go as an All Black 15 to Munster because you will be All Blacks. So you need to be well prepared. You need to have the coaching staff all aligned and you need to go there. It'll be an amazing atmosphere and you want to win it. Do you think there's a few unlucky players not to have made it here? If you think about players who were outstanding in Super Rugby, like Braden Yosse, Ricky Riccatelli won a Super Rugby title. Um, and then there's Falao Fakatava. Are there yeah. any unlucky players? Well, they're, they're the three names that I was really surprised with. I thought Riccatelli's had a, had a good season. Um, you know, they shared up the, the hooker responsibilities um, in the Blues. So, yeah, um, I don't know what your number nine's done down there, mate. Oh, I, don't th I just don't think there's room. I, I don't think they needed three halfbacks in this because they've got three halfbacks with the All Blacks. If yeah, but he's, gone, he's gone from three to six. 
Yeah, yeah, but but I think I mean Noah Hotham obviously has already been elevated into the All Black environment, and Finlay Christie's played close to 30 Test matches. So so to jump ahead of those two guys and Roy Gard, um, Ratama, and T.J. Peronara, I mean, there's no so there's the yeah no. But what, what I'm there. saying, I know he's 18 that, months ago. Like oh, he is number yeah, but three. That's a long time in rugby. That, that, that eighteen months ago. Okay, so why isn't he getting selected? Do you think is it his kicking game? Why is he now dropped to six? What does he need to do to get back into? Because he, I mean, he came on as a reserve. You can't pick everybody in the MPC. I mean, no, in the MPC. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think for me, he's just not there. He's not number four or five. He's not better than Finlay Christie uh, and all his experience. I mean, Hotham's the one that's jumped him. Uh, yeah, if, we, if we look at it, Hotham's the one that's jumped him. Yeah. And what I mean, what is he? He's actually bring something different to Hotham. I like him. If he comes off the bench, he's a little bit nippy. And also, you've got to remember, he's now preparing his role in the Highlanders as a starter. He wasn't sort of really doing that. And it's, he'll go away, Fakatava, and, and sort of, you know, and, and learn from that. I, I think uh, Yossi, for me, because he's in a struggling team. Yeah. You know, Manoa, the Turbos, are, they, they've struggled. They have only won one sort of game. But so that had an influence. He, yeah, and, but he, he was outstanding every single game. So guys flourish when they're in a team with momentum and going forward. He was, he was doing that for the Hurricanes. At Manoa too, exactly the same thing. He was the guy you sort of went to when you needed sort of something. He did absolutely these sort of things. But then I look at the guys he's contesting against, and there's some good Lucys. You know, there's some good number eight, real good number eight. So. I think he was possibly unlucky, but who do you, who do you swap? I out? thought, well, I thought he'd, I thought they wouldn't take Kariffi, but I guess Kariffi is he's come off an injury. Um, I'm a great specialist, but I just thought that these guys had sort of gone above him as a loose forward sort of trio. So I mean, I, I rate Kariffi; he's been outstanding, and he's one of those guys that you go, he's unlucky, right? But anyway.